Hey, Fitchy here, back at the game in another one. Look at the little fire grate I got made. Made that here today. Um, been wanting to make one for a while now to put in the side by side for a woman goes off camping and whatnot. So I uh, built this here today and used it tonight. So I'm going to show you how I made it here now. So stick around. So let's get started on my next little project. I enjoy my cyber side runs and uh, I spend a lot of time on my cyber side. One thing I've been after to do is uh, we have what they call boil ups. Uh, we go up in the woods and uh, we have a fire and we cook up and have a cup of tea and all that type of stuff. And I've been wanting to build a grill, a portable grill I can put in the machine, I can take up there and we can lay the, the pot, you know, frying pan on it, the kettle on it, boil the kettle and everything, right? So. I went online, looked at a bunch of little uh, ideas and everything, and have basically come up with one of my own. It's pretty well close to what everybody else has been doing. But I went through my scrap bin, come up with some parts and pieces and everything to make everything up. And uh, so what I got here is a bunch of pieces. I got some mesh. I got some uh, scrap piece of angle iron. I got a solid stock piece of three quarter inch round bar. And a couple of washers, fine tread, uh, large bolt and nut and a piece of pipe with all this here now i'm going to sit down i'm going to make myself a little portable um, grill that i can take on the machine and take up in the country and have a little cook ups in the woods and so uh let's get started on this now okay the first thing i went and did is i had to figure out the size that i was going to make it i wanted to fit down inside the box that's on my machine so i come up with a few measurements here and just drew it out randomly on the bench uh, squared it up and everything to give myself measurements and this grate here fits inside this here will fit into the box on the machine uh, that way I can store it and so what I'm going to do now is take these pieces of angle iron different ones here and I'm going to cut them to length here cut out the four lengths cut them out of 45 on the ends here and get them fit inside the there so that's the first thing I'm going to do
Okay, so I got this cleaned up, okay? All I did is I marked them on 45 degree angle on the bottom and cut them off on a 45. And then I gave them a quick clean up with a bit of 24 grit grinding disc, just to knock the scale off it, because it is all scrap steel. Um, this is one inch by one inch by one eight wall. That's the thickness of it. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the pieces together here. Set them up. And put that down like that there and put it at a right angle there and weld the corners together and I'll just keep working my way around and make a nice square little box out of it.
So I got that welded up inside and out. I got to weld it up on the inside as well. And the outside, you see me how I squared it up. I've done two sections at a time and I put it together. Now, is it perfectly square? Uh, it's not bad, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do here now is, because most fellas now will put the grade on the inside here. Um, I'm gonna do it this way and put the grade on the top side. Because I would like to be able to slide things across the top of it, like a pan or something like that. When it's turned over the other way, this way here, everything has to fit down side of it. And frying pans sometimes don't always fit right. And you could like to be able to put something off the end of it. And I'm not worried about it falling off it, uh, more or less than I'm just trying to get myself more, uh, as much grill room as I possibly can on this side here. Right? So I'm going to clean this up now, grind this flat here so I can get ready to mount the mesh. So I went ahead and I cleaned all them up, just grinding them off so that the mesh fits level and I rounded out the corners so they're not sharp. Now I'm going to take this mesh up here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it out in such a way, just line up one corner like so. Just line up one corner like so and I'm just going to come over here and mark it and blindly cut it off and then same it across there find a good spot which is probably about right here and I'll just cut it off across there so I'll go ahead and I'll get that piece trimmed off So I got that all cleaned up, I cut it off the size and went and sanded it both sides, bit of rust on it. I wanted to prep it first so when it goes to paint it it'll have something to stick to because it won't stick to just the regular old uh, non-sanded steel. Uh, as for measurements, I'm doing all this blindly, okay? Um, I have it really, I got a rough measurement that I had here. I have measured this since I put it together. And uh, as you can see, I'm just cutting everything blindly. I cut one piece out and then I duplicated it, made a second piece and whatnot. So I don't know exactly how big this is. A little less than 14 there. Yeah, a little less than 14 there. By a little uh, 20 and three quarters. Okay. 20 and three quarters. Yeah. So that's the size of it. And like I'm not particular on how big I was making this as long as it wasn't over 14 inches okay uh, it had to be uh, at least 14 and a half or less so I'm pretty good because this will fit down inside the box now so all I'm going to do now is take that center that up there and I'm just going to weld it right along these edges here and all them spots all the way around
So here's all I did. All the ends I welded them. All the way along there. All the ends up here. I welded all the ends. Done that all the way around. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the grinder and lightly knock the heads off of that to make it nice and smooth. So and round off the edges. So it's actually you can actually handle it and not cut your hands on the welding. So there you go, that's the actual rack is finished, okay, that's all I'm going to do with that, okay. Now, next thing i got to make now is, this is my upright pole that I'm going to put in the ground, this one here, and i got to find a way that I'm going to mount that to here, but be able to take it apart and be able to swing it and whatnot. So, all I come up with is i got this piece of pipe here, and that fits over the end of this here, okay, just like so. I'm going to take that and cut that in half because I'm going to do this a little bit different. Most fellas just has the one on it goes up and down. I want to have a stop on it that I can adjust the height of it. And then when I put the top on, I can actually turn it around. It, it stands freely, but I'll adjust the height from a separate one itself. So I'm going to take this here now and I'm going to cut this in half, this here, and get two out of it. So I got two of them cut off. Ooh, look, one's a little bit longer than the other. Oh my, end of the world. Um, what I'm going to do here now is I want two of these to ride on top of each other here. Now that's going to be a bit of a cagey thing, fall down side of itself and whatever. And what I'm going to do, solve that, is I have two washers here, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them upside down, well that washer there, and well that washer there. So I got two mating surfaces that are large and flat. If I want to drill holes in them or something, put pins in them, I can. But they'll actually be able to rotate on this here, and they're not just rotating on this upper edge here. So I'll get them cleaned up, get them welded up. If you ever noticed that washers got a flat side and they got a round side, a lot, pretty well all washers are like it, right? You always find a washer when they're made got a round edge on one side and a sharp edge on the other. I'm going to turn around and put the sharp edges up so that they meet together like this here. I'll just center that on that. Hasn't got to be perfect, remember? But that's the reason why I use these here because I got a perfect straight edge on this end here to start with. Well, them on there now.
So, there's one there, all welded up. It's a bit warm. That one's hot, won't touch it. But what I'm going to do here now is I took the grate and I raised it up off the bench. I used these, uh, it looks to be about an inch and a quarter inch pipe. And I laid it up on top of it just so I can actually have it up and have it level on the bench. And get it up a bit, because I wanted to mount this in the middle of this side here. I'll find the center here now, and I'll basically put that there and I'll weld that on there. This is level on the bench, this is level, so should work out okay. So I welded that on there, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut that off flush step because I want this, when I store it, to be able to mount it upside down like this in the machine, and this here won't be held up off the floor, and then I can lay stuff down into it this way here. So that way, that here is flush to that there. So that's what I'm going to do here next. Now, I'm just going to take the cut wheel now and just cut that off. So I got that cut off now flush, so when I store it away, it'll lay flat in the machine like that there. And then that there will basically, you won't even, it'll take up any space, only for this little bit here. And I can put that up on one end, so that'll be fine. Now next thing I got to do now is this is the, the bottom plate. This will mount here and be mounted on the shaft. But what I need to do, I need to put a lock on this here, okay? I need to put something in that I can turn that I can lock it so I can adjust the height of it, which is going to be this way. Go up and down, I can adjust the height of it. Now, what I got done, I got a fine tread bolt here, and it's fairly big. You can go with a smaller bolt, but I want something with a bit more bite on it that can take a bit of longevity with it, and the fine tread part of it uh, should last longer than like a coarse tread bolt. So, uh, what I got to do now is I got to drill a hole in this here and make it big enough that that fits in through there, and I can weld this nut here onto the side of this. It seems like it's an awful big piece, but I want to have, have it so that it's, it works out pretty good and I got lots of adjustment on it because I'm going to cut this off and put a T handle on it and then you'll just turn it like so for that here to go up and down you can tighten it up and it'll give you a bit of leeway or a bit of strength to it to tighten it up 
because I find when you go with smaller, cheaper bolts, uh, it tends to wear more. And uh, I'm going to flatten this end here a small bit so that it grabs under the pipe a bit better. And uh, that way I haven't got to worry about it slipping and whatnot. So. Okay, so I'm going to go to drill a hole in that now and get it set up for that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a 1-8 hole first because I always find it's a lot easier to dr drill a hole when you got a, a hole already there. And 1-8 is very easy to usually drill through everything. If the truck was tight. A lot of people try to drill out a lot of this stuff with just whatever size bit. I don't know why, I just always found to put a 1-8 drill bit in through there first and you should be able to go through it, no problem at all. See how far the step it can go through. Want to drill a bit out of fitness. There we go, bigger drill bit. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to position that there like so and weld that enough right to that there. So there you go. I went ahead and I welded that on there. Now I got the, all that straightened away, so now what I got to do now is I know how far this is going to go in through. It doesn't have to go in very far. So I'm going to cut this off basically get the threads here now and use this part here as a handle and turn it on the side. I think I'm just going to make one lever come off it instead of a T handle. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it in a T. I think with something with a bit more leverage on it would be better. So I'm probably just going to put a 90 on it and have it so that you can tighten it up. You can get a hand on it and wrap it right around.
So there you go. Simple little handle. Not going to get too fancy with it. I got that all made now. I'm going to let that cool down. Now the only thing left to do is this rod. Okay, what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of a point down one end of it so that I can actually drive it into the ground. Um, you, you might think that might be a bit overkill. You could probably use like hollow tube or something like that. The problem we got up here, we're a very rocky island and um, it's very hard to drive anything into the ground. Uh, nine chances on ten when you drive something in the ground, it's going to strike a rock, right? So you actually basically push yourself off the rock and go down next to it or whatnot. But uh, all I'm going to do here now is just going to put a little bit of an edge on this here. Cut, cut the, like a couple of flat sides off just to bring this to a little bit of a point. I'm not going to make it really sharp because uh, it'll only go blunt on me anyway. So I'm going to turn around and get that cut. So then that'll be the last piece and then we can see what it all looks like when it's put together. So I got that pipe ball sharpened up, and all I got done, I got a clamp in the vise here now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all together here in the vise to show you how it all goes together. We got that piece there, I went and give it a quick clean up. And we got the little thing down, just slide down over that, like so, and I'll thread that into that. And that will give you my height, wherever I want to put it to over the fire. There's a bit of leverage on, leverage on that, so that works pretty good for that. And that's all you do is. This piece here goes on like so. And that's the extent of that. Then you can swing it in and swing it out if you want to. Put your kettle and everything on it. So hmm. you gotta reinforce that a bit. Playing around with it some because of the diameter, this pipe is different than the solid stock one here. Uh, there's a bit of a droop on this here, it doesn't sit level. So what I got done is I cut it again, and you can see I got that angle now, see? And I just did done a test fit on it, and it looks pretty good there now. So I'm going to go ahead back and re-weld all these here. I wanted to have it so it had a bit of an uphill uh, tip on it, so that when you put it on far and you put any weight on it, it wouldn't tip over. Get under, get under. See, he's looking at it there now. It's a lot better that way there. Yeah. I'll weld that up there now. This here, piece of steel here, has got a bit of flex in it. So what I'm going to do, is I went up and got another piece of angle iron here. Now I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to run two braces diagonally this way here. One there and one over here out to this point here. So she'll take the strength from out here and push it back to here. So i got these two little pieces of angle iron trimmed up, cleaned up. And I'm just going to lay them in place there and weld them. Solid in around through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that welded up and then do another test fit on this. That is much better. The strength is there now, there's no flexibility there. I can put a bit of weight on that, so that's good. I can spin it clear from that nut. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's a good thing. A lot of people has to tight, the tighten up this here on this piece here. Uh, ah, Jesus hot. And uh, the problem I have with that idea is that uh, it's very hard to be able to just swing it out. Because when you got something laid over the fire, you would like to be able to reach in and grab it, spin it out to the outside so that you can get it off. And probably like if it's getting too hot. And then you can just spin it back in again if you want to. And that's the reason why I've done it this way. And the height is basically, basically you can just dust it off of that there. And I got a nice big surface there for that to swing on. And it's nice and solid, right? To come off of that there. I can put a lot of weight on that. For like a kettle and a frying pan with a bit of grub in it. Oh, look out now. So I'm going to go ahead now and get that painted up. And that'll be the end of that project. And then I got to go check it out and try it out. We'll take it out and for a road test. So I'm gonna paint this, I'm gonna leave the bar alone. The bar is a chrome piece, so I'll just clean it up a bit. That'll be fine, don't need to paint that. Uh, but I got picked up this cheap high heat paint. I don't know how long it's gonna last. All that there will be burnt off. And there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just put a coat of paint on it so it looks clean for the once anyway. <laughs> Well, the old grill worked best kind. Boil the kettle, got myself a nice cup of tea here by the fire tonight. And we got company. Come over, bud. Come over. Yes, you're coming over to join us, aren't you? Want to have a cup of tea with us too, eh? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Anyway, hope the tips were good. And until next time.